Hello everyone, welcome back to my kitchen and today I am making apple pectin out of apples, fresh apples. I got these at my local farmer's co-op and these are technically what would be considered deer apples which are, they're really hard, really tough. And that's okay. We're not trying to make apple pies. We're not trying to make apple tarts. We're making apple pectin and apple sauce and apple juice. So I just slice them all up and I start out by filling this pot half full of water and adding a quarter cup of lemon juice. And then in this pot I put all of stuff I cut off the core. In this I put all of the cores. We're going to be boiling everything but we don't want to have to pick cores and seeds out of what will be our applesauce and such. So I just cut them and boil them separately. It works easier. Alright, I'm just going to keep slicing these and get these filled up. This is half full with a quarter cup. This is half full with a quarter cup. And we're just going to cut them up and fill them up. And there's 15 pounds of apples. 15 pounds of apples will get this completely filled up. And the cores will be able to fill this about three quarters full. And then we'll get lots and lots of fun stuff out of it. We'll be back when all this is done. And here is all the flesh and skin of 15 pounds of apples. And then I filled it up with about 12 quarts of water. And then there's a quarter cup of lemon juice in there. It helps the apples from turning brown. Then we're going to put this on the stove and we're going to turn it on medium. And let it start coming up to a nice boil until all of these soften up. If you turn it on high, right at this stage when they're still fresh, it's going to boil over and foam over and make a giant mess. So you want to put it on medium and let it slowly boil until they get softer and then you can turn it up higher. And then in this one, I have all the cores and all the scrap. And I have eight quarts of water because it'll boil down to about six quarts. And after everything is boiled, we'll strain it all. And then we'll get to work. We'll be back. Okay, I've been boiling on medium for about 45 minutes. And they're not done. When you push in to stir... If you feel any hard apple whatsoever, it's not done. You should be able to push into it and everything just crumble apart and come apart. So we're going to keep going. It'll, it's going to boil for a good hour, hour and a half. So we're going to keep letting it go. And we'll be back. There it is. We've been boiling for an hour and a half. And as you can see, they've become like translucent and see-through. And as you stir, they're just soft and squishy and mushy and they're perfect. So we're going to turn it off and let it sit for an hour. And then they'll all sink to the bottom and you'll have gorgeous, beautiful golden apple juice on top. We'll be back. Now that it's boiled and set for an hour, as you can see, all the apples have sunk to the bottom. Now we're going to take this beautiful juice and these beautiful apples and we're going to strain them and separate them using our jelly bag. And this is going to take a really long time, so I'm sure you don't want to sit here and watch this. So, 
So, I'm going to pause, and I'll be back after I've strained all of this, which will take about another hour. We'll be back. Here is our apple cores boiling. They are very far from done. They're still really hard. They're not coming apart. You should be able to press it against the side and your spoon just make it crumble to pieces. So this has got quite a ways to go. And also, it'll be completely transparent all the way through the core. You're going to let this keep boiling and we'll be back. All right, the cores have been boiling for an hour and a half. As you can see, they're pretty much, oop, no, as you cannot see, they're pretty much transparent. But what you can see is how, well, maybe, how squishy they are. See? They literally just crumble apart. Perfect. All right. I'm going to turn this off and let this cool. And then we'll strain it. We'll be back. And here we have the beautiful golden apple juice from the core. And in here is a beautiful pink hued golden color juice from the rest of the meat and the skins. They have different colors to them because this had skins, this didn't. We're going to mix both of them together into a big pot and let it sit and settle for about an hour because we want all the pectin and all that thick leftover meat. It's a nice thick film. That's what your pectin will be in the bottom of your jars. It'll settle to the bottom of your pan and that's what we want. So we're going to pour these together, and we'll be back. We have approximately 15 quarts of juice between the two of them. And like I said, we're going to let it settle for about an hour, and then we'll come back and we will scoop most of the juice off of the top, and then make apple juice out of it, and then the little bit that's left at the bottom about three or four quarts left at the bottom. We'll put that into a crock pot and cook it down to make sure we have our pectin. We'll be back to show you what to do with the meat from the apples. We're going to take all the meat and all the skins and we're going to put them through our blender, put them into a crock pot with a few spices and some sugar and make applesauce for our kids. We'll be back. One of the tricks I like to do when I am getting ready to blend and puree all my apple meat is to put the sugar halfway up with the uh, meat. Then, depending upon whether or not you like cinnamon, I add half a tablespoon of cinnamon. cup and a half of sugar, half a tablespoon of cinnamon, and as my father always said, if you're going to have sweet, you always got to add just a little bit of salt. So I have a quarter of a teaspoon of applewood smoked sea salt, and then of course, this is one of my tricks, I add half a cap full of almond extract. And that's going to be for all 15 pounds of apples that have boiled down and become mush. And I finish filling it up. And then I blend it. Stick it in the crock pot. Crock pot. And blend more. We'll be back when I've got all this blended up and in the crock pot. We'll be back. Right now that we've blended and pureed our applesauce and skins up really well, and the reason I use the skins and everything and I don't peel them is because there's so much nutrition and vitamins 
and minerals in that skin. Alright. It's all in the crock pot. All the spices, herbs, sugar. Now, we're going to plug it in and cook it on high for about two or three hours until more of the water has cooked out and the flavors have mixed up so wonderfully. We'll be back. Hello. All right. So our applesauce has cooked down for about an hour and a half. And it's nice and thick now. In the oven, I baked my jars at 250 degrees for 20 minutes. Then, I'm just going to load them up. I got different assorted sizes here because some are for baking. These bigger ones I'll use for baking. And the smaller ones my kids will use for individual snacks. Instead of those little... Buying those little applesauce things. I just make them for them myself. Then I know everything that's going in it. Alright, we're going to get these all filled up. And then we'll be back. Alright, we got six little kids jars and two big jars for baking. In here, I have apple cider vinegar and very warm water. And then I've tamped them down and debubbled them as best as possible. Then I'm just going to wipe off the rims. Lid. Ring. And I'm going to do that to each and every jar. And then we'll put them in our water bath canner to process. We'll be back. There we go. Our jars of applesauce are in the water. We're going to turn it on high, bring it up to a boil, and process it for 25 minutes. We'll be back. That is what processing looks like. And we're going to process it for 25 minutes. We'll be back. Alright, it's been processing for 25 minutes, so we're going to turn it off. And open it up. And let it cool down and come to room temperature for about 5 minutes. Alright, it's been 5 minutes, so we're going to pull these out of the water. And let them sit. And in about an hour, all of them will have popped. Oop. And closed up and sealed tight. And the rings will have loosened up. And then we can label them and have them ready to go. Oop. I love that sound. Gorgeous applesauce for your kids. Beautiful dark coloring. Your children will absolutely love this. Now I have another 12 ounce jar that I have not processed and will not process because it's in my fridge. I'll be baking bread in the morning. So this is going to be on my shelves. So we have seven jars here and another jar in the fridge. That's eight jars of applesauce out of 15 pounds of apples. And two of these jars are the big 12 ounce jars. So actually it's more like nine little jars. All right, we'll be back. 
seven jars. They have sat and cooled, and as you can tell, the lids just spin right off now. We've got seven of them here and one in my fridge. So we got a total of eight jars of applesauce so far. All right. Now we're going to process our apple juice. And we'll be back to see how many jars of apple products we end up with. We'll be back. Hello, everyone. All right. It is the next day. And we have everything laid out here that we got from our 15 pounds of apples. Let me pull you back a little bit. So you can see a little bit more of what we got. All right. Out of our 15 pounds of apples, I got seven quarts of apple juice. Now, I would have gotten nine, but I can only fit seven in my canner at a time. So we turned two of the apple juices into apple jelly. Look how beautiful that is. Nice and set. Beautiful golden color. Oh, that's going to be wonderful on sandwiches. Then, I had ended up with nine jars. But unfortunately, one of my jars had a crack in it. And I didn't know it till after it went through the canner. That happens. So I would have had nine jars, but I walked away with eight. Eight jars of pectin, seven jars of apple, sauce, apple juice, two jars of apple jelly, and then of course, my family's favorite, all the applesauce. These little ones here make perfect little individual jars for your kids for snack time. And then my big tall ones here I use for baking. So out of 15 pounds of apples, I got 20 some jars of product. You can do this with any of those five pound bags of apples that you buy in the store. But I can tell you, and I can guarantee you, that a lot of times those four, three, four dollar bags of apples, those apples have been sitting in storage for upwards of a year or two before they even start putting them on the shelf to sell. So the apple pectin you're going to get is not going to be as well. It's not going to work as well. The apple juice will not be as thick. And the apple sauce just won't taste quite as fresh. Because, like I said, the apples that a lot of the apples that you buy in those big five pound cheap bags are not fresh apples. These were apples that came from a local food co op from apple trees that grew right here in the area and apples that were picked just this fall. So all the product I have here was made out of essentially fresh apples. Thanks for coming along with me on this adventure and learning all the fun different things you can make out of your apples. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and share. It really helps us out and helps spread the channel and helps me teach others how to do different things. Thanks for coming along, and remember everyone, stay positive. Bye. See you next time.